Welcome back to another Motion Monday. In today's episode, we're gonna be using a basic title in Final Cut Pro and opening in Motion to customize it. Let's get right into it. Hey, I'm Daniel Rubio, video resident here at Online Creator Studio. And on this channel, we like to create content that helps you be more creative every day. Now in this series, we like to focus on motion, Apple motion to be specific. It's $50 and if you haven't, be sure to watch the first two episodes in this series. Today's episode, we are gonna be starting out in Final Cut Pro. Now, Final Cut is my preferred video editor of choice, but, uh, and the one we'll be focusing on today. We are here to talk about motion, not Final Cut. Now, let's go ahead and look here. Final Cut has a ton of pre-built in titles, uh, templates that you can just quickly drag and drop. Now, if we look here, we have some really just, this is kind of just like a basic fade in, fade out type description. We have this like uh, other one. We have this little pop-up animation type thing. And a lot of times I see a lot of people use this one it has some sort of like functionality. Now, if I drag this onto this timeline, I come here, there's not a lot of stuff that's built into this title to customize. Now, uh, I can change the scale and the position here, but there's not much else that I can do. And so I see this a lot that a lot of people end up using this, but it's the same thing. Now, you kind of want to stand out. You don't want everything to be the same when you're using Final Cut. So or you know be same like oh everyone's using the same thing but you can make a quick change so if i open a copy in motion you right click on the title and say open a copy in motion and it's going to duplicate that title we now have that title opened in motion and it's opened up as a copy uh, the reason why it does that is so that it doesn't get rid of the old copy and doesn't overwrite it so everything stays the same and this one's just a new version it's like it's as if you built it now there's a lot of different things happening here we can see that there's some animations and some groupings and things like that so they actually have some rulers here to kind of showcase where the the lower third is going to end up so if i actually if i play this it's going to go here and then uh, at the end plays out which there's actually no animation on the outside. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna add an animation on the out when on when it, it's leaving and allow the ability to change the background in Final Cut. So let's get started. Let's get started with analyzing a little bit of the information we got going on. So if I click on this, it's gonna sh I'm gonna see that there is uh, several hand done animations here. Uh, last time we talked about animating with keyframes and how I believe behaviors are actually a little easier now this one they did with uh keyframe animation with is not a problem uh and it, you know it's super easy we can see that there's a transform position of x and a position of y and a z uh and so it's hopping in it plants itself and then it kind of slides forward and then over here we have this slide up and like a little uh jiggle at the top so there's that. Now let's try to figure out what we want to do at the end of this element when it goes to play out. So let's say we want to actually animate the whole thing or uh, let's say we want to animate just the text off first uh, before we exit out on the actual end graphic. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on the title gr element grouping and I'm going to hit O. And so that kind of shortens that up a little bit. And we're actually gonna animate this one as a group when we animate it out. Uh, looking at here, we actually have a timeline of about five seconds and three, 30 frames, so almost six seconds. So maybe we'll, we'll go right here to the, so that's five seconds. Let's go halfway in between there. So let's go to five, 15 so that gives a little bit of extra leeway i can see that this is actually in a 3d group so if i right click you can see 3d group but if i uncheck that that's just a 2d group and there are some benefits in that a lot of times uh, you might want to you don't want to put the whole project in 3d but you want to have elements that are are in 3d so that's how you would do that we'll have to touch on that on a separate video so let's go back over here and one of the first things i actually want to do is i want to come down to this uh this shape layer and right here we see that there's an animation that comes in with the this Bezier. And what I wanna do is actually click on this Bezier tool 
and I'm gonna go over to shape and right here I, oh, I apologize there's this has an animation but what I want to do is I actually want to at set this parameter to final cut to be editable so I'm gonna click on this arrow and go over here to publish and if I go to project now I had built-in scale position but now I have this color situation and um, I'm gonna actually change this to color uh, color so that it's pretty simple in being able to change what the color is so let this animate in and then over here we see it pop out now let's animation let's add an animation from five seconds and we're going to go to text behaviors and let's see uh, we'll do it maybe text basic let's uh, actually I don't know what I want to do so let's go to the library go to behaviors let's go to text animations text sequences we'll go to text basic and let's what what's pop out oh no I don't want to do that rotate out so kind of let's see slide out so we could change that tr track in track out hmm let's look at the energetic because that pop in is a little bit more energetic oh look bounce out click on name take the bounce out and add it right here now I can see that there is so if I come I add the animation now it bounces out in a down now let's go ahead and see the inspector and see if we can adjust the controls. So uh, it's constant. Let's see if we can do ease both. And that does it a little bit faster. I want to maybe extend it. So maybe what we can do is actually have it fade out with the whole thing at the very end. So I'm going to come over here and go to behaviors so now we're on the description one and I'm gonna come back to uh, text energetic and we're gonna go to bounce out down here we then drag it to the end we're gonna retime this to be somewhat similar and I'm going to smooth out the controls to be a ease both under controls on the left hand side so we have the text graphic that we're going to do and now that's going to fade now because this is actually a shape uh, we should come over here to shape and we can see what uh sort of thing we can do here there's a lot of here with shape but we don't want to do that we want to go to maybe basic motion and i want to come to let's try let's, let's do a motion path so by default the motion path actually defaults from like left to right and so if I come over here if I scroll down I have the motion path from the beginning and it goes to the end so I want to so this is fine and then when it gets here it moves over to, to the left which we don't want to do what we want to do is uh, I'm actually going to zoom out a little bit of the timeline we see that there's an anchor point here and what we're going to do is we're going to have it slide down so so now we've moved it to slide down it's gonna these texts they're gonna bounce up and down and then they're gonna come down together that was pretty good now it's a little wonky because it's uh, on a constant route, but I'm gonna go to ease both and maybe we're gonna make it a little longer so if I come over here bounce bounce down hey it turned out pretty good bounce up let it play bounce bounce down so that's easy so I'm gonna go ahead and save this save it as a duplicate all right, so we've saved it. You could have saved it to a category. I decided not to. I'm going to go over here to my Final Cut. And it's now updated. So if I take this and I bring it down here, I can then say bounce there. But you know what? I want a different color. Let's let's say I want I want like a, this yellowish color. Come back here. Boom, done. Now you have a custom title in Final Cut Pro. And that's it. Now you can always go in and try to tweak some other things. So maybe you'd want to come in and you're like, this busy shape is just so big. What if I actually brought it closer to, you know. There you go. So I wanted to save that. Come back over here. 
switch off of the title, go back to lower thirds, and it's now updated. You just have to redrag it in. And if I play, boom, that's it. Again, I can switch to a different color. Close that out. Maybe I want to position this up here. All right, so the, here's another. It's actually just quickly trying to adjust it. This is actually isn't the best use of case. So this little uh, has been published with the shape, but not with the name and description. So let's actually go and see if we can link that together. Now, this is a, a link behavior, and this looks like it's been linked to the sh to this null. Uh, and it's controlling the shape, but could we also link, uh, let's come over here. We're going to come to position text elements. Oh, whoops. Text elements. We're going to link it. All right. So what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, so because this shape is now linked to this null, what I'm actually going to do is I have a link here. I'm going to turn this on. And right now I have it set to the whole position, but I'm going to have it go to uh, transform position. And I'm only going to set it to the Y position. And what I'm going to set it to is to this radial blur. And I'm going to offset this so that it's the Y is down. Now, I also need to adjust the shape a little bit, the Bezier shape, because of the way it turned out. And we're going to just elongate just a smidge. So if I right save that, Command Save, or Command S, and uh, let's click off of this, go back here, drag, put this down in the timeline. All right, so... One eternity later. What I need to show you guys is how to link something. And this is where one of those perfect examples that uh, you learn something as you open up some of these motion project files from the basic title pack that Final Cut comes with. Because uh, I knew that you can link things, but I didn't realize that you can link very specific things. So uh, there's a filter that has a radial blur. And in that radial blur, it's in a null. So because there's a radial blur, there's like a little widget. Uh, if I click on this radial blur, you see this little circle thing. And what they've done is somehow, I guess they've clamped it somehow to something, which I'm not quite sure about how it works. I'll have to figure that out and then talk to you guys in a different video. But for this one, we wanted to link this parameter. Uh, we wanted to, just like the shape was linked to uh, the radio blur where you can move it up and down. So if I come back over to the actual, the other title and I drop it down, if I take this little knob, it only moves the shape, which doesn't make sense. Like, I don't know why they decided to do that. Maybe they just didn't have time. They're like, whatever. It was you know, the early days and they just haven't decided to go and update it. So in what we've gone and done is that we've added, we click on the text element. We click on the position or actually we want to come to open up a position, click on the position Y and say add parameter and you're going to do link parameter. Now uh, I actually added it to the, the whole thing and so if you click on link you can actually just adjust it right here. You can go target parameters. I said properties, transform, position and then I went you can do you can change it here all X, Y. So this one I wanted to choose Y. Now what we also needed to do is we had to drive, drag the null to this like drop zone area and that connects it to the properties uh, this this little object's properties in this area. But we had to come to filters and then radial blur and then center and we wanted to hit Y. And what that does is then allows us to actually control it. So if I come back over here, so if I come back to my project, uh, click off of this, go back to lower thirds, uh, drop this right here. So it opens up. Now I can open it up and say, oh, I want to move it up here. It retains the text and everything. And now I can customize it by changing the there. Oh, you know what? That's a dark color. That's hard to read. Now I could come right here to the, to to adjust it with my text stuff, right? Name, and that's fine. But you could also publish that parameter. So if I go back to motion and I go to the name and I go to text, it's super easy. All you have to do is go to appearance. 
And then over here where it says face, you find the arrow and you can go to publish. And you do the same thing like I did before, come back to project, rename it, and you can do that. Now, uh, I'm going to go up here and add that. Now, there is, because we've added a build out step, so why don't we come over here, uh, where does it start? Right here, I'm going to add a marker. So I'm going to add a marker. If I, I'm going to double click this marker. And I'm going to say this is actually a build out optional and then I'm hit OK and now look you can see over here in the par a parameter there's a build out and build in option so they can click it and it'll disable it so I hit and save go back over here delete this get off of this it's gonna animate out but you know what I don't want to animate out because let's say I decided to throw some b-roll Come over here, just unclick this, and it doesn't, it doesn't animate out. Boom. Easy as that. All right, guys, so that is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. This one was actually pretty fun for me to make because I learned something new. Just like you will learn something new when you open up a standard template title in Final Cut to go to adjust it. It really is awesome that we have so many of these basic titles in Final Cut that we can open up and poke around so we can learn things about motion and make better titles on our own. That's it for today. If you have a specific topic you'd like to learn about motion, please leave it in the comments down below. You guys have been loving it and I've been loving it hearing from you guys on how much you want to learn about motion because motion is really powerful and I found that it's been one of those secret weapons that people don't know that they have. So that's all for today. I'll see you guys in the next one.